All right, good morning. Um, look, man, I know a lot of people don't like to hear that, uh, you know, the Bible, that book, paper and ink, is uh, changing supernaturally. They think it's craziness, but, I mean, isn't, isn't God's Word everything supernatural? I mean, isn't this everything, you know, raising the dead, all these things, the splitting of the water, the Red Sea, all these things, supernatural? I mean, I know people say, oh, the Word of God can't change. Well, you're correct, 100% correct in it. You're 100% correct. The Word of God can't change. But what is the, who is the Word of God? Jesus Christ is the Word of God. The Holy Spirit is the Word of God. The Word of all truth. Jesus Christ is the truth. He is the Word incarnate. The Word that was made flesh. Now, understand that likeness of simple flesh. Anyway, so enough of that. I just want to point these things out. And if you deny it and just don't even bother to look into it, then, you know, whatever. Uh, we reap what we sow. So anyways, here we go. Matthew 22, verse 24. He gave me this verse. And this is amazing. A few days ago, I want to show you this. And, and I'll show it to you first. I was going to wait, but I'll show it to you first. He had me look up, you know, it was impressed on me to look up La Palma, that La Palma Island, where that has that giant, super volcano or whatever that's going off, right? Um, that is uh, the this, this symbol for it. The, uh, I don't know if it's the crest of it or the on the flag or whatever, but this symbol, and I'm gonna show it to you. Yeah, someone's trying to call me right now, of course. So anyways, take a good look at this. Look at that symbol. Okay, it's, a, it's, it's like a kingdom, right? A castle, a kingdom that's coming out of the water and it's a giant angel right like an archangel right and he's holding he's holding a balance scales in his hand right and there's a crown there's a crown above it so this is it i mean <laughs> look at that look at that okay and he gave me this uh, it's so crazy he gave me this several days ago and i and i took a screenshot of it but then i kind of forgot about it for a day but uh Last night I was watching uh, Manifest, right, and, and and just happened to be uh, the the that season that came on where they were seeing this angel that had scales in its hand, uh, just like that, and so that brought me back that back to my mind. I said, "Oh, he had me take a screenshot of that for some reason," and uh, and then this morning I was you know in prayer with him when I woke up. Hey, is there anything you want me to say or look into? And he gave me this verse. He put it right in front of me. And I'm not even sure how he did it. I think I made a mistake. I just punched it in. Like, I made a mistake, right? But I felt his spirit. I just punched it into my my sword on my Bible app. And this is what came up. And then I felt his spirit when I read it. I felt his spirit. And you can believe that or not. I mean, I hear him. I hear him. I, that veil's been lifted. I, I see spiritual things. I've seen the other side. And there's no going back once you've seen it. I mean, there you know. You just know. He confirms. He comforts you. There's, there's no doubt about it. I have no doubt about it. So anyways, this verse, I'll read it the way we'll see it in most of the Bibles and take every word back to its origin. The lexicons, the, using the lexicons, the strongs, all these things. But the main thing is you have to be led by a spirit. Only the Holy Spirit of God can lead you into all truth and understanding. Only the Spirit of God can teach you spiritual things. And you're only given the amount of knowledge and spiritual understanding by the amount of by the amount you submit yourself to him, bending your knee to him and come into an agreement with his word. And his word is his Holy Spirit, the word that was made flesh, which is Jesus Christ, who is the truth. That's his word. And people are, uh, I don't know, they, they just think that book on ink and paper is it. That's, that's a guide. That's a translation as well. And a lot was lost in translation. But, uh, it, but it leads you, it points you to Christ, right? And by taking a deeper study of it, if you love me, you will abide in my word, meaning you will take a more continued inspection and study of my word. But, but you have to want to, you have to put God before everything else, even yourself, even your own life. So that picture that I just showed you relates directly to this verse, but you can't see it as you read it, only being led by a spirit. And you, I'm no better than anybody else, but I... I humble myself before the Lord as a child. I'm willing to be taught directly from him. I hear him. I hear him. He leads me. There, you know, and I'm no better than anybody. I know. So here we go. Matthew 22, verse 24. 
saying, Master, Moses said, If a man die having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. There it is. And you would think, well, what's that got to I mean, you know, but we understand. So he was like giving out the law, like if his brother dies and has no children, then his his brother uh, can marry that wife that had no children and raise up children, have seed. But anyways, physical, physical, uh, right? That's physical meaning, but there's spiritual truth that's contained in that word. And, and here it is, right here, and believe it or not, this is Matthew 22, verse 24. Speak forth to teach and advise, calling all by name, laying forth the truth that bids all to give an answer to what is poured forth from God, being used by Jesus Christ himself to show men the way to salvation by the assistance of the Holy Spirit, by explaining and expounding on a thing to draw out of the waters, many peoples, right? And rescue these Israelites, to rescue the Israelites by speaking the truth, the word of God. If whosoever is made to doubt God's word, being uncertain, every man that doubts is dying, is dying like a tree that is drying up from the lack of the living water, right? By withering away. And they plant rotten seeds that leads to eternal death by spiritual separation from God, by this physical and temporal world that they have fallen into by the origin of a cause to become like the Most High, to be spiritually dead, being possessed mentally by the things of this world, the riches, goods, needs, and necessities, and all the pleasures of this world. They have joined themselves to it as in a covenant of a marriage, living in fear, being bound to the law of the flesh, being uncircumcised. They haven't separated themselves from the things of this world. And they have been taken captive. They're held captive by them. They're held in bondage to them by their condition, this condition of being spiritually separated from God. By not answering his call to come out and separate themselves from the things of this world, uh, to accept his proposal to accept Christ's proposal. No man is worthy without doing so. Therefore, they cannot be taken home. They are children of men and not of God. They are possessed by their own desires and lusts of the flesh. They are addicted to them, being exposed, being exposed to this curse and doomed to God's wrath and his vision and his vengeance and punishment for doing so. As God is the avenger for all who receive him by the price that he paid of the highest degree, no greater love hath any man than one who lays his life down for another, right? So there's that, that price that he paid of the highest degree. For our sins, all who are backwards by a baffling wind, this evil spirit that causes chaos and division, right, confusion, leading people astray as their love for one another waxes cold by their own conceit, their own excessive pride, and their own knowledge, and leaning on their own understanding. They belong to the same people that are born of the womb, this matrix. They have attached themselves, uniting themselves to this world, putting themselves first, worshiping themselves, making themselves their own God, putting themselves before God, the Alpha, as in a marriage, as in a marriage, they have joined themselves to a childless woman by their superimposition, being covered, that's something that covers another, right? Superimposition. Uh, being covered in its darkness, the darkness of this world, which is willful ignorance. They are willfully ignorant by their own choice, their own free will. They have joined themselves to all who are backwards, breathing unconsciously. The walking dead, they're the walking dead. They, they're in a state of unconsciousness, being led around by the flesh and the things of this world because they're not walking in the spirit. They're not connected back to God yet. They're not born again in the spirit of God. They are the walking dead spiritually by their own excessive pride. Their own excessive pride. Bringing this age of grace to an end by these prophetic events, and I keep seeing this in multiple scriptures he's given me, 
bringing this age of grace to an end by these prophetic events that are coming to pass that were meant to separate the wheat from the tares, the sheep from the goats, the fruit of the tree of life from the rotten fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that God forbid us to partake from that turns them away from God and makes them rot mixed together with the iron, this grappy, oh, I, you know, whatever, with the clay, right? This mixing together of the iron with the clay. As also, and also those who are rising up that are mixed together in their midst, but have been reconciled back to God, standing on the foundation of truth by their relationship to Jesus Christ, standing properly up by a reversal of the governance of their minds, putting their relationship to God first above all other things, committed to keeping his family intact so they may escape all the horrors that are coming upon the face of this earth in safety by all being placed in a balance to find those that are firm in their faith and do not waver. All those who have received and ate and drank in the truth that was set before them, that was set before them, saying yes to Christ's proposal, joining him and his cause by submitting themselves completely to him to plant seeds, to spread seeds uh, by the divine power of the Holy Spirit that operates within their souls, within our souls, by which we are transformed to be a child of the Most High God by believing his word that is to be drawn out that is drawn out as a sword, his word, right? As a sword to separate, whom? to separate those that are backwards and full of conceit. We are employed by Christ in a bond, in a union of, like in a marriage, of brotherhood, brotherly love, having the same Father, his Holy Spirit, by his blood that was payment for our sins. By our own free will, we do so by our own free will, by our own choice, as a fellow believer in Christ, as a fellow believer in Christ. So there's that verse. And look, I, like I said, I can't, I can't, I wish I could, you know, I don't, I don't have all those, I'm not all that computer savvy and can splice in things and sh like that picture. Look at this picture. And he gave me this picture. You know, look at that. La Poma, right? This is from the Canary Islands. Look, looks like an archangel holding scales. And there's a crown and there's waters. This this kingdom of God that's rising out of the waters and being weighed in the balance. Just like that verse said. And I had no idea because when you read it, you don't know. I had no idea what it was going to say. But he gave me that and I took a snapshot. I knew it was for some reason. I knew I just felt led to do it. And you know, that's the way it is. It's that calling. You're saying yes to his calling, his proposal, and submitting yourself to, to him so that he can employ you, so you can become his disciple. You and you, you follow him as your shepherd, as your guide, you know, through his gift of the Holy Spirit. So you follow him and you just hear him, you obey him. He he lifts that veil that only the bridegroom has the authority to lift the veil of his bride, right? He lifts that veil and he leads you into all truth and righteousness. And look, I'm no better than anybody else, but I submit myself to God. I put him first and it's caused, caused, it's caused so many problems in this world. Like, I, you know, people leave you, they, they depart from you. They, they, you know, I, I know I love when I mentioned the, the supernatural changes that are occurring, and they are. If you, if you reject it because of what you're taught by men, oh, God's word can't change. If you're thinking that ink and paper is God's word, you are mistaken. You're sadly mistaken. Um, I'm not saying that it wasn't originally. I believe the original scriptures, I, I, I'll bet they haven't changed, right, that were written by the apostles and the prophets and all those who were called by God to do his will. Right? Um, I'm sure the originals haven't changed, but these translation men, and we know as it's been reprinted and everything that it changed that way. But look, I, like I said, I had a Bible that I used for almost 40 years to study out of. And I picked it up one morning, like several years ago, multiple, you know, and I'm reading it. And I'm like, what is the way? How did these words get in here? Uh, you know, replacing wineskins with the word bottles. The word Easter, come on, man. That was never in the original King James Version. It was uh, Passover. You know, come on. The, the word pilots, the word suburbs, the word 
unicorn, you know, unicorn, it said wild ox. I, I know, I started memorizing verses when I was a little kid in the 70s, and I'm no better than anybody else, but my parents, thank God for my parents, they, they put that foundation within us, and I never departed from it. You know, when I got married and had kids and I was going to college and all these different things, you know, and trying to build my own family, putting myself first, my own desires and everything first. I, I, you know, I put that God on the back burner, but he's whipped my butt, man. I mean, so many things have occurred, you know, divorce and death of family members and children and so many things, your friends, some of your best friends and, you know, just things that occur, man, that, that turn you back to God and, and and instead of rejecting them and becoming angry that these things, we're learning from our own mistakes, our errors, our own faults. We're to put God first like that verse says. Bend our knee to him. Submit ourselves completely to him. You have to let go of what we're being taught by men. And I see these supernatural changes. If you reject it and you're not even willing to look into it, are you taking a more continued inspection of his word like he tells us to do? You know, but the word was with God. In the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was made flesh in the likeness of flesh. The word was with God and the word was God. Jesus Christ is the word incarnate. He is God incarnate. He, he is the embodiment of God's truth and knowledge and purity and everything. He's the first and last, the only physical representation of God himself, the Alpha and the Omega. Right? That's how we relate to God is through Jesus Christ. That's why he is the only way. I, I don't know how I wish I could just convey it better. And, uh, you know, if you're unwilling to come into agreement with him, with his word, not me, I, I see it. I see it. And if you don't see it, I don't know what to tell you, man. I, I really don't. I don't know what to say. And I don't, you know, I've always studied from King James Bible. So I don't know how it's affected other translations or copies or whatever. I've just always had a King James. I mean, you know, and that's what I study from. But but you have to be led with all these things that are going on. You have to be led by a spirit. You know, you, you have to submit yourself. You just pray, pray that he lifts that veil, opens your eyes. You know, and we're we're all given different gifts, right? So you don't have to see the same things I see because we're all a, a piece of a puzzle. So we're all in a different shape, different form. We're all being molded differently by God Himself, right? To come in to conform to the image of God, the bigger picture of the truth, the spiritual purity and truth that's only found in him, right? But we're all a vital piece of that puzzle. Some some might be bigger piece and we're smaller pieces. Some get many gifts, some get lesser, but we're to spread the truth, that, that whatever he gives us. So, you know, we I don't think we all, have, I know we don't all have to see the same thing, but you're, you're to really take in what people say. And if it's something that you reject, you really need to, Take a deeper study of it just because you, you know, but you, you have to be led by a spirit. You know, it has to agree with his word. Him, who is the word incarnate. Jesus Christ is the word of God that was made flesh. I mean, yeah, that we should all agree on. I mean, completely. So, all right. So anyways, understand that. This is just a miracle. Like that, he gave me that picture. I didn't know why. He told me to look up, put it on my spirit. I looked it up and then he gave me this verse today and he just brought it back to my remembrance last night. And I didn't know he was giving me this verse last night. He gave it to me this morning. I mean, he, because I just punched it in. It's like he took complete control over me. I have to submit myself to him. And I'm no better than you. I'm no better than anybody else. So anyways... God bless you, love and respect everybody who draws people to Christ. But we're at the end here. We are at the end. I mean, I, even things I've that I've looked up before and seen just in the last couple of weeks, I I look at and things are changing. Things are changing, man. It's getting this world's getting worse and worse. And and look, this judgment, judgment. He's the archangel standing up on the kingdom, that rising up out of the water, and he's holding the scales, the balance. It's time for judgment. So there's that. There's that. All right. I mean, the, the things that occur spiritually, the spirituals played out in the physical. But can you see it? Are you open to it? Are you coming into an agreement with God's word, submitting yourself to him? He's the only one that can lead you into all truth and righteousness, his Holy Spirit, which is the word of God. His Holy Spirit is the word of God. Jesus Christ is the word of God. No doubt. In the beginning was the word. God is the word. It, it, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh, right? So, understand, understand that. I wish, I wish I could 
make it more clear. Anyways, all right, God bless. Have a great day. Bye.